What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video and on this one we are mailing out an SD card. Cowabunga! Let's kick shell! Pizza power! So I normally don't do this, I don't really mail out SD cards, but for this person, I gotta mail it out. So if you haven't followed me yet, be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Vic underscore VP. Um, I'm guessing it's working me saying it in the videos because a lot of you guys are adding me and you know following me and you guys are actually messaging me. So this one goes out to a person by the name of Crazy Baby 420. Um, he messaged me and basically he needed some help. Not you know me. You can message me, I'll help you. I don't charge for that as long as I'm you know quick on the text. I can help you. So he first started out with a Pandora's box build on a Street Fighter. Um, he was having a very difficult time. The Pandora's box harness was confusing him, but it's A-OK. -okay. Anyway, long story short, he went from a Pandora's box build and jumped right into a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle four player mod. And basically he messaged me and said, hey Vic, I wanna do four player mod. What can I do? And I said, listen, I can... the only hard thing is that you would have to wire up everything and all that. So he was fine with that. This basically is an instructional video for him specifically, kind of going through the SD card and what to do and configure it. You can still take this video if you don't have my image, it might work with other images, I don't know. But let's start with the basics. Number one, I'm gonna flip the camera around. Unfortunately, I don't have my you know screen capture, I wish I did, but we're kind of ghetto rigging it. We're gonna do a couple of basics that you need before you even put in the SD card and then I'll show you what you do on the actual TV connected to the Pi. So let's start with a couple of basics real quick. This usually is the way you should do the four player mod for TMNT. Basically player one, two, three, and four. Um, players one and two always, I suggest six buttons. If you are doing a PC build, you could do eight buttons, but we are focusing on the Pi. A big question people always ask, player three and player four, do they need six buttons? You could do that. Um, most customers do this for the arcade games. You don't need six buttons if you're playing MAME, you don't need six buttons. Six buttons would be helpful if you're doing like an N64 kind of game. But again, the N64 on arcade sticks is a nightmare. I don't suggest it. So again, keep in mind, one, two, three, and four. We got six buttons, six buttons, four buttons, four buttons. Keep in mind, yes, every player needs its own separate, you know, connected to its USB encoder, the coin and the start button. So each player needs a coin and a start button. The easiest way to do this when you do do it, I highly suggest that you keep each player connected to its own encoder. So this right here, these six buttons should be on its own USB encoder. This six, seven, eight buttons for player one should be on its own USB encoder. You should never ever mix like, you know, let's say you're gonna put this encoder, the yellow, and you're gonna add the player two starts. Don't do that. You need four separate encoders. Never mix it up. On all of my builds, I highly suggest that you follow the Super Nintendo joypad configuration. What does that mean? If you look very carefully, again, we're focusing on players one and two first. We have three buttons up top, three buttons on the bottom. So try to think of these right here as an SNES controller. So we have Y, X, B, A. Y, X, B, A. These two right here is gonna be left trigger, right trigger. So on the Super Nintendo, it had the left and the right. So again, you're gonna do Y, X, L, B, A, are your start should be start your coin should be select unfortunately i don't have a usb encoder on me but it's very important that you wire this first and all your other players have to follow the same exact wiring so on the encoder there's like two rows like a left and a right if you have this button one set to like button one on the usb encoder Make sure that on your second encoder, button one is set to the same thing. It makes things so much easier. I highly suggest it. Don't forget it. Now, we have to focus on players three and four. If you notice again, players three and four, there's four buttons. We're missing two buttons. For this here, you're gonna follow the Super Nintendo, same thing, minus L and R. So 
Button one should be Y. Up top, button two should be X, B, A. Same thing on the right side, Y, X, B, A. There's no left, there's no right. So make sure again, as you can see right here, button one, this one we set to Y, all of these should be Y. If you put like, you know, button one here and this button one here, it's a nightmare. Don't even deal with it. So again, Y, X, B, A. The only thing missing on this picture are the four admin buttons. You don't need admin buttons, but I do suggest that you do put it. Admin buttons go on the same encoder as player one all the time, player one. So I believe my customer, the, the person that's been Instagramming me, he put admin buttons right on like the lap here uh, at the bottom of the controller. Awesome stuff. Make sure that that is configured to player one's encoder, nothing else. If you do not have it as player one encoder, it won't work. So very simple. The encoders, uh, I'm sorry, the admin buttons, you could do any configuration. doesn't matter what button it is. Usually I put them towards the last set of buttons, like button 12, 11, 10, and nine. But again, it doesn't matter. Now that we have the control panel set, let's focus on the Raspberry Pi itself. You have a Raspberry Pi on the back here should be a slot. You're going to slide in the SD card and there you go. The big thing now, remember you have four USB encoders. You have four USB slots on your Pi. I highly suggest player one on the top left. We're looking at it. This is the ethernet ethernet jack. And then we have the four, right? I usually suggest player one, two, three, four. So again, one, your player one should be right here. Your player two should be right here. Your player three should be on the top right. And your player four should be on your bottom right. One, two, three, four. Once you have that all plugged in, you should be able to just leave this inside the control panel and let it rock. Be sure that your HDMI is plugged in. My customer has a external kind of um, speaker. So your auxiliary wire is here and your Pi power goes into here. Again, I highly suggest you do that first before you even plug in the Pi. Make sure your wiring is good. Make sure that you have the USB slots in the correct spot. Next up, we're gonna load up the Pi. For my customer in the mail, you're going to get your SD card. This is the SD card, but the mini is inside of it. And it's going to show up in the original packaging that it came in. Once you do get it, you just be sure to put it into the Pi. This is my ghetto rig of my testing right now until the house is done. But basically right now we have HDMI into the Pi. I'm going to be plugging in a USB because I don't have any encoders right now, but the USB will act as our encoder and I have the TV on. Some people, I mean, as far as other maybe, you know, vendors, I set up my SD card to automatically boot into the Pi. It's called a forest. This is forced. I'm not, not boot into the Pi. I'm sorry. This is forced to HDMI. So if you get somebody else's SD card, you might need the TV on before you power on the Pi. Um, my card, it's forced HDMI. So you don't have to worry about that. So we're going to have my keyboard. This is acting as player one. Basically, remember what I said, player one goes into the top left USB slot on your Pi. HDMI is plugged in. You don't have to worry about the speaker being plugged in right now, but it's a good thing you kind of do it. And you're basically going to find our power. We're going to take our power and plug it into the Pi. Once you give power to the Pi, your screen might flash with a rainbow picture. This is a good sign. I have this set to like some, you know, retro artwork and all that. So that's a good sign. Big thing though is to take a look at your Pi. You should have an orange LED and a blinking green LED. If that green is blinking, that means it is reading your SD card. If you are not getting green, it means that your SD card is either not right, broken, needs to be rewritten. And again, once you power it on, you will see the green blink. Your screen will go black. Just let it do its thing. Don't press any buttons. I promise you it will boot up. Don't touch it. This is the first screen you are going to see, which is emulation station. Again, 
our green light is blinking. If you don't have a green light, any SD card, even if you have one already working and your Pi doesn't work, you look right at that. If your green light is not blinking, that means that there is an error on the SD card. Your SD card might, be, might need to be reflashed. So again, with my image, we do have a track mode. This will boot up into emulation station first. This is like the first thing you'll do. We'll configure it and then I'll show you how to do it. You're gonna get the screen. Welcome, no game pads detected. On player one, on your joystick, on player one, you're just gonna hold down our first button. Doesn't really matter what button you hold down. You could, I usually suggest the first one, doesn't matter. Because once you do hold it down, it's gonna pop up right here, the name of your encoder. So I'm using a keyboard and it says keyboard at the bottom. Okay, this is it. This is where we configure our controls. So it's gonna show you your, your encoder. The D-pad, this right here is your basic, your joystick. You're gonna go up, down, left, and right. Your start on the control panel, you're gonna press the start. Again, I'm using my keyboard. Your select. And now here we go. This is A, B, X, Y. So remember what we said before. This is where it always like it's it's even for me i have a picture you always have it so it's asking for a b x y so again a b x y so basically now you're just gonna you're gonna press the you know button five four two one for me i'm using a keyboard so we could kind of pretend our keyboard right here i usually use asd zxc so again my bottom, which is again, A, B, X, Y. I just forgot it. <laughs> A, B, X, Y, right? And you're gonna see as you press it, it goes. I'm gonna go A, B, X, Y. Left shoulder, right shoulder. So that, again, just like how we had our wiring, left shoulder, right shoulder. So that's button three and six on my keyboard button three, button six. Now you're gonna get into a hiccup. Oh my God, Vic, what am I doing? Left trigger, what's that? We don't assign these. This is only assigned if you are using a controller. So we're gonna take button one. It doesn't really matter which one you do, but I'd rather you do button one because button one's already configured and you're just gonna hold it down for about three to four seconds. Just hold it down, ready? When you hold it down, it jumps to not define. That is a good sign. Release the button and hold it down again. Release the button, hold it down again. Release the button, hold it down. Release the button, hold it down. Release the button, hold it down. You just have to get through this. Again, we don't have these buttons. We don't have these joysticks. Hold the button, let it go, just like that, okay? Do not press your admin buttons. Don't do that. Here we go on the last set, which is your hotkey enable. This here on your four admin buttons that you have, no matter where you do it. Remember, you're gonna have four admin buttons. The way I do my admins is hotkey, load, save, exit. Hotkey, load, save, exit. So whichever button you want, I highly suggest, you know, he has it here, one, two, three, four. I usually suggest the first one to be the hotkey. On my keyboard, I'm just gonna press, I don't know, my hotkey button, which will be nine. It will show that, and you're good. This one here, you either have to press your A and B, and basically, we are on our next screen. Your joystick now should be able to navigate your menu. Again, I had mine set to arrow keys. I should be able to navigate, that's a good sign. We're not gonna go into gaming yet, but just to show you that it does work, I believe if you press either A or B, I forgot which one, A enters you into your menu. If I press B, it brings me back, okay? My TV's messed up, there's no issue with the SD card, my TV's fucked up. What we're gonna do from here is the next step. Again, keep in mind, if you're able to go up and down with the joystick, so far so good, you did good. We're gonna go down and we're gonna find the RetroPie. When you're on RetroPie, you're gonna press 
A, you're going to get this screen right here. I'm doing this because it's literally this. You should see the same exact screen. If you don't see the screen, you're lost. Nice and easy, okay? Retro Pie, we're staying calm. You're rocking it so far. On this screen, we're going to go right here to Retro Arc. Just Retro Arc, nothing else. Retro Arc, we're going to press Enter or A, I should say. The screen will flash. And it's going to bring you into RetroArch. Awesome. Now we're going into here because we have to configure joystick three, joystick four, just to make sure that it's assigned the correct kind of stick. I didn't make sense on that, but let's go slow. First things first. I mean, I'm going to set this up for you, buddy, but for other people, this right now is set to a four by three screen. I don't like it. We're going to go down using our joystick. We're going to go to settings and we're going to press A or B. See, as you can see right now, the, the button that I've been using to enter is not working. So it's usually going to be now the B button. See that kind of flips It's just for this screen. Don't panic. I know it, you can't really do anything. Don't worry about it. Let's go into video and we're going to go down into aspect ratio. I usually switch this to a 16 by nine when we're good there. Again, we're kind of flipped here. It's not like the original menu buttons. This was our original enter button five. Now on the, on retro arc, it is the back. So we're just going to go back. Good so far. Next thing we're going to go to is the input. This is the biggest thing that we need input. We're going to go into it. We're not going to touch much stuff here. Let's go. First thing is first. I always like to start my hotkeys. We're going to go into input hotkey binds, enter or a or B. <laughs> this has a lot of stuff. You do have a lot of options here. Remember what I said we're working on now. Basically, this screen is showing us our admin buttons. The first one we're going to go into is load. On my admin buttons, remember you have four, one, two, three, four. Button one, remember, is the hotkey. I usually do load as the second one. So we're going to do load state. On your joystick, you're going to press enter or a, and it's going to give you five seconds to press that button. Whatever you do, well, you could always fix it, but don't press enter twice or else it's going to assign that button. So again, you're going to press it once and now you're going to press button two, admin button two. Okay. And you're going to see it here. It will literally say like button, whatever you had it set to. Next one we're going to go to is save state, bring the joystick down. We press enter and then same thing. You're going to press the third button on your admins, bring it down. We're going to go to quit, quit retro art, same thing, enter, and you're going to press button four. Just to be safe, we're going to go down and you're going to see something that says enable hotkeys. It should say the key that you pressed. If not, don't panic. We're going to press enter and mine should be nine. So I'm just pressing nine. As you can see there, it's number nine. So again, you're going to do the first one. That's the first button. I'm going to bring it back and I'm actually just going to do it on my, on my keyboard. So I'm going to pick my load as I don't know, eight. And as you can see, when I change it, you can see it there. I'm going to press my save as seven and I'm going to do my quit as zero. So as you can see, it shows that I changed it. See, this hotkeys are good. We're going to go back into our retro arc screen. We're going to go into user binds one. This is player one. We're going to go enter a couple things here. So on yours, it should show you the device. It's going to say your USB encoder. It should already be there. First things first, we're going to take this retro pad. We're going to just go right on the joystick and we're going to put with analog. We're going to go down on the joystick and we're going to put this analog to digital type. We're going to go right and we're going to make it left. Good. The device, this here, it might scroll kind of like how you see like these words scrolling. Let me show you which one word Let me get one. like this. Like you see how these words are scrolling. So this is scrolling like my Zen Mo's. It says it here like Zinmo player and then like just let the word go. It should show you like the number one. 
Again, I right now don't have any USB encoders, so your USB device should be there. Mine basically is no device because it's a keyboard, but your thing should be right here. On this screen, you could kind of verify everything. So for example, we focus on B, we focus like right here from B all the way down to like A and X and all that, okay? This B will show you what button you pressed. I pressed the Z button on the keyboard. B, Y, select, start. This should already be set. You shouldn't have to set this because you did your configurations. If you went into like PlayStation controllers, you could you know set up L2, R2. For right now, we don't have that. We are good to go. This is set. We're gonna go back. And now we're gonna go to player two. Boom. Same thing, retro pad with analog, go down, left analog. This here now is gonna say the same encoder, but it should say like a number two. As you can see right now for me, this really would have copied. If nothing's here, worst case, you go down. And the only thing is, again, we're still using player one, my joystick on player one. So if this does happen, you press enter on player one. Like for example, if we're gonna assign this B, you're gonna press enter on player one, but then you're gonna press, oh, sorry. But then you're gonna press on player two's joystick, the, the B button. Like I said, you're gonna press enter on player one, but you're gonna press player two joysticks now. You're gonna assign player two now. Same thing applies, fix all of this, the BYs and all that, bring it back. We're gonna do the same thing for player three, enter. Same thing, retro pad with analog, left analog, and then same thing here. Your USB encoder should be here and it should say number three. Then if it doesn't, you can do the same thing. Just be sure that you are pressing the third joystick. So right now, if we're doing user three, make sure, make sure that you are doing these controls. So you're pressing enter here on player one, but you are configuring joystick three. Now, same thing here, you could kind of configure your up and down, left and right, but again, this should be set. I know it's difficult, I'm not showing it to you because I don't have my USB encoders, but this should be set. We're gonna go back and we're gonna do the same thing for player four, again, with analog. The reason why we're doing this is because of the N64. So you could play Mario Kart with analog. We're gonna go down and we're gonna make this left analog. Basically it's making the analog stick into the D-pad. That's what that translates to. Analog stick, that's the N64 middle stick, is reading as the digital, the D-pad. So you have the D-pad. Once we're all set, we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back and we're gonna go back. This is the very important part right here, okay? You gotta go into configurations. You press enter or A and it's gonna show you this you have to go into save current configuration. Don't do new, save current configuration. When you do press that, oops. When you do press that, you're gonna see yellow text. Again, save current configuration. You're gonna press enter and you're gonna see yellow text. That means everything has been saved. You are good to go. We're gonna go back. We're on the main menu, and now we're gonna go to quit retro arc. Screen will flash. This is a good sign, so far so good. So now real quick, while we are in this menu, we might as well do the audio for your headphone jack. So joystick goes up, you go into audio. Oh, I press back, I'm sorry. You press enter. This screen will show. And basically you're just going to set it to headphones and okay. And there you go. And it'll take you back. Now that we're back into this menu, we're going to go back and we're going to do a quick test on street fighter. So we're going to use our joystick and go up on the joystick. I'm gonna to go to arcade. I'm gonna press A. We're gonna go up and then we're gonna hold up on the joystick. 
And basically this will skim through all the letters and we're gonna look up for a Street Fighter or a Super Street Fighter. We always test with Street Fighter because Street Fighter has the six buttons. So right now, really quick, gonna go to Super Street Fighter. You'll see that, we press A. You'll get this screen and then you'll be booted into this. So with this, you could test everything, put your coins in, push start and all that. This also is a way that you could test your admin buttons. So for you to exit, you would hold down your hotkey and exit. When you exit, it should bring you back to this menu here. While you are testing on Street Fighter, just make sure all your buttons work. So you're gonna do your all six, you know, do, it should be low punch, medium punch, high punch, low kick, medium, high kick. Um, and then also use player two. So make sure you're doing player one and two so you can test that out. Then since you're here, you could load up a four player game to test players three and four. And the most common one is the Simpsons game. So you hold down joystick one and you'll basically look up the TH. So you, have, you do have to go into TH, the. So that real quick. RS. Again, you look up for the Simpsons. So as you can see, we have a lot of those. Elemental P, QRS, the Simpsons, the first one. Don't do the two player one. This one is the four player one. Go into it and then test it. Once you're all set, hotkey exit, and you should come back to here. The last step that you do now, now that you know this all works, you bring it back. You go back into settings, or I should say RetroPie. And you activate a track mode. Press enter on a track mode. Screen's gonna go black, it's gonna switch over and it's gonna give you like the beautiful menus and all that. And honestly, that is it, you should be set. Every time the Raspberry Pi boots, you will always get a random kind of screen. Sometimes screens say like, press A to continue, just ignore it, it's just artwork stuff. And that is it, this is gonna boot into a track mode. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. Don't be afraid to message me. VicVP, Game Case Arcade.